A Johannesburg-based pediatrician has penned an open letter to the health department addressing the dire state of public hospitals in Gauteng. The doctor, who actually works at Rahima Mwosa Mother and Child Hospital, details how horrendous working conditions are failing the children in those wards and are contributing to their deaths. For reaction to this letter, let's bring in the Gauteng Health Portfolio Committee Chair, Mawani Paladi Dihamela, who joins us via our bid link this morning. It's great to have you on the program, ma'am. Thanks for your time. I'm sure you've gotten an opportunity to go through that letter. I mean, it really is heart-wrenching to listen or rather read how this pediatrician details, I guess, feeling failed by the system himself. He's, he essentially points out how the conditions at his work prohibit him from essentially saving lives. Is there anything in that letter that's taken you by surprise? Yeah, uh, uh, good morning and thank you for inviting us to your uh, channel this morning. Uh, I must uh, start by saying uh, the role of the portfolio committee is to oversee the role, the work that the Department of Health is doing. So as a committee, we also received that letter. We saw it, it was circulating in the social media, so we interacted with it. And as uh, overseer of the Department of Health, we co were concerned with the report that um, babies were dying in that hospital. Because of our role, then I immediately contacted the DDG, acting DDG to find out what is going on with this story. And the DDG indicated that uh, our con main, main concern was the deaths that were reported by the letter. The DDG assured us that there are no babies who died uh, because of the poor generator that are not kicking in. Because according to what we understood in that letter, uh, when there is load shedding, uh, the generators are so weak that they cannot kick in to ensure that uh, babies are not getting cold or getting treatment. So we were assured that at least there are no babies who died because of that. So uh, as a committee, when there are these issues that are raised, Sometimes we become reactive. We also go to find out what is the story in the hospital that mm. is going round, that is affecting the health department. So, but we were reassured that uh, at least uh, this letter is going around, but there are no babies who died. However, the doctor might be reporting issues that are outstanding that have been there uh, uh, that are affecting the department. And we recently visited the hospital, I think uh, it was in March, because we as a committee, we are also concerned about the state of the hospital, the aging infrastructure there. So we decided to go and find out if the hospital, Rahima Musa, will be able to do its own maintenance, because that's where, as a committee, uh, since we came in in this administration, we have identified a gap that need to be addressed. The hospital reassured us that if they were given the opportunity to do their own maintenance, they will ensure that they do that because the maintenance is not done by the Department of Health, it's done by their sister department, which is Department of Infrastructure. The aging uh, infrastructure and the workload uh, of patients that are using that hospital, we have now learned that in 2010, they could deliver 10,000 babies per annum. Yeah. But ever since there, it's up to 16,000 babies per annum. So the workload plus the aging infrastructure remain a challenge right. for the committee. Let me come in there. From your last visit, you have pointed out several things already that even you were concerned about. What remedial kind of action then were you recommending outside of, I guess, you know, agreeing that the hospital itself should be allowed to do its own maintenance work? Well, uh, this is a process that cannot be uh, corrected uh, within a short space of time because uh, maintenance uh, in the olden days, all health facilities used to do their own maintenance. And I have learned as a chairperson that uh, there is an act that came some time back to ensure that uh, maintenance of health facilities is done elsewhere. Since we have uh, submitted our report, we also received uh, as if you were listening to the state of the province addressed by the Premier, he acknowledged in his report that the Department of Infrastructure in Gauteng 
is not coping with dealing with these uh, issues of infrastructure. And our, we were vindicated to have reported since 2019 when we came in that the infrastructure is not going well. Right. However, the expectation for the hospital to ensure that uh, when there are problems of this nature, including load shedding, that is affecting the hospital. Uh, according to the report that I have received, the load shedding is, could be scheduled for 8 o'clock, but it may come at 9, and it will be indicated that it will take maybe two hours. Then it will be prolonged for four hours or more. Then the generators in the hospital are being overworked. So, But we think it is important for extra generators so that in the event there is load shedding, some extra generators could be used to ensure the services are, pro yeah. are, pro are continuous. It's not only, you know, issues around, for instance, neo neonatal incubators going cold with children in them because of load shedding, but there's a whole range of other issues overflowing, um, you know, wards there, scanners also not working. Have you at least been able to contact this doctor who I think, you know, you'll agree is pointing out things that you must be aware of in order to get a sense of what's the best way to respond to these long-standing issues? Uh, it doesn't uh, operate like that, that we contact the doctor. What we do, we go to the employer, which is the Department of Health. Like I've indicated, I have since contacted the DD, acting DDG, Dr. Hongwana, who is, the, who is responsible for clinical services. But and I mean, as many people, sorry to interrupt you there, many people will find a problem with that because in this letter, he raises questions, this doctor, about how people who are meant to oversee the work that he does aren't doing that. In fact, he opens the letter by, you know, essentially appealing to the people who you say you've spoken to to come down onto the ward and see for themselves the difficult work that he has to contend with. What I'm pointing out yes. is that the people that you speak to could very well downplay the situation because they too aren't smelling like a bed of roses if this letter is anything to go by. Yes, what we, we normally will do, we do oversight, we, can, we have the opportunity to visit the hospital so that we get also the first-hand information from the hospital as well as from the very doctor. So, so far I haven't communicated with her because I only received this letter, I think, on Friday, Saturday evening. So I interacted with the letter and the department, including yesterday. So the committee is also in its own uh, responsibilities to do oversight visits and including involving the talking with the doctor so that we also get first-hand information from those that are affected by the areas where they are working, where they do not get uh, 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 due support from the management. So that will still happen because we haven't yet uh, 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 contacted her. We will still since, do since Saturday. Okay, when can we expect you to speak to at least this doctor or some people who've worked with him to get a sense of what they feel ought to be done, especially at this hospital? Before the end of this week, we will have done an un uh, announced visit, which we will ensure that the doctor is part of the meeting. Because as a committee, we, do, we side with those that are affected by the services. So I wouldn't say today, because there were other uh, issues that already are lined up, but we will definitely contact the doctor to get his side of the story face-to-face, -face, not uh, through the social media. Mawani Paladi Bihabela, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. I imagine many people would have anticipated that engagement to take place much earlier, given the urgency of the issues that this doctor raises in this letter. But thanks for your time nonetheless. Uh, Mawani Paladi Dikhamela is the chairperson of the Gauteng Health Portfolio Committee. Appreciate your time.